Hey guys, welcome back to the Love and Dubai show. We're honored to welcome a filmmaker and advocate for Palestinian rights. Her latest release, The Teacher, is out now. She's Oscar nominated, BAFTA award winning. Stay tuned as we explore the power of film in giving voice to the silenced. Welcome to the show, Farah Nabusi. We're so excited to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks Thank for having you. Me. Thank you for being here. So I want to ask what inspired you initially to become a filmmaker? Oh, I, I guess the short version um, of the story is that I went home. So I'm a Palestinian by blood, by heritage on both my parents' side, but I was born, raised, educated in the UK and London. And so I went to Palestine um, for the first time as an adult um, not too long ago, uh, around eight, nine years ago. And it changed me. It changed me witnessing firsthand on the ground what's taking place there. Um, the discrimination, the the injustice, and how systematic and institutionalized it is, despite having known what was happening prior to, to going. But when you see something like that with your own eyes, it, it has an impact on you that you can't kind of look away from. And uh, so I came back to what I consider my life of privilege, and I'd been writing therapeutically about what I had seen and, and felt and witnessed and, and talked about with dozens and dozens of Palestinians. And then a couple of years later, I realized that I could do something with those writings. I kind of felt a desire to sort of express myself creatively about about those stories I'd come across, and um, and jumped into the deep end because I have no no um, formal background in in film studying film. I actually have a, a financial investment banking background, um, and few short films later, after producing writing. I directed my first film, The Present, Al Hadiya, which uh, I, I think you mentioned, and uh, that's available on Netflix. And um, and that's that's that was my first film that I directed. Turns out I have the bug and uh, and maybe a little bit of talent. I don't know. <laughs> um, and and never looked back. So yeah, it's so interesting. You said you visited Palestine for the first time eight or nine years ago, and um, you were surprised by what you saw. And I think. We as a people generally potentially become desensitized by what by what we're seeing. We're seeing so much of it. So when you visited for the first time, what shook you that you didn't know before? What were some key things that kind of stood out to you that you think the world needed to see? I mean, it's not that I didn't know. Um, it's more that exactly that. It was more the the shock and realization. the extent, how colossal the injustice is, um, whether it was the sort of the, the war plowing between Palestinian homes and, and villages and towns or the checkpoints or um, the, the, the very idea of, of, of actually sitting with a family on the rubble of their demolished homes versus hearing about that just as numbers, um, standing in an olive grove where all the trees have been burnt. By illegal settlers, um, you know, it, it really. And as you're driving through the West Bank, this, this, and and you look up on the on the hilltops and you see these settlements, that makes it very real. Rather than looking at a map, for example. So it's not that I didn't know; it was more the, the experience of being there on the ground. And I thought to myself, okay, at some point, I'd lo- you know, I'd love, I'd love people to be able to come to Palestine and see with their eyes as well. That's not very practical, not very logistically possible, mm-hmm. and extremely expensive. So, and you need people to be willing to go. So, I guess in some ways, the next best thing would be bring Palestine to them. Um, and for me, cinema is is one of the most powerful, beautiful means of meaningful human communication and art forms the world has ever known. So, if I could do that, then at least we can all kind of witness and Sense. and and feel. Because you said desensitized, right? And that's true when when you get numbers and when you get the sort of facts and figures and you see just images, and they, but does it make it real for you? And interestingly enough, someone who who just saw uh, my most recent film um, was telling me they were chatting with someone who came out the cinemas um, who didn't know so much about what was going on, but did know from a factual perspective. And they had a conversation, complete stranger, and he said, "I I knew, but actually watching this film made it real." So interesting. That's amazing because you just portrayed what happens in Palestine through your eyes to the people. So you must have faced some challenges while doing the film. What are some of the challenges that you have faced 
uh, as you were trying to, let's say, portray what's happening in Palestine? Well, so um, I shot the present in in the Bethlehem area of the West Bank in Palestine, and then the teacher, which is a, a feature length film, so as a two hour movie, it's a lot longer on the ground. And I shot that in the Nablus area of the West Bank in Palestine. So. Already making independent cinema um, is really hard, no matter where you are in the world, logistically, practically, you're putting out fires every single day. Um, and when you're then actually also shooting in what is militarily occupied, colonized territory, you have that to contend with every single day as well. Um, they say choose the path of least resistance. Maybe we should have shot somewhere else. Um, but honestly, I, I really wanted to be on the ground um, from a authenticity point of view but also from you know working with the people there and and there's a lot of talent but they don't have as much opportunity to work on films and cinema um, and anyway various reasons for doing it there now you have that to, to deal with um, and so the challenges for me while there are practical issues like roadblocks and checkpoints and so for example we had two days off and everybody couldn't make it back to set uh, for four days because the military had set up roadblocks. You know, that in independent cinema, that's a disaster. But for me, it was more the sort of emotional, mental toll. Um, because you are, stay with me a second here, but you're basically, you're making a film that's set in a really harsh reality. And you're shooting that film in that harsh reality while that reality is unfolding around you in real time. So an example of this is we were shooting the scene um, in the film that, I don't want to do spoilers, but anyway, um, something's happening in that. And um, meanwhile, um, in the village of Berin, which is a village very nearby where we were shooting, where the teacher in the film is actually from, he's, he's from the village of Berin, um, illegal settlers had descended and started torching the olive groves. And that's something that actually takes place in the film um, as well. And so we get word that that's happening at the same time. And, and it, it, it's there's a pressure of really trying to do justice to that injustice that is taking place around you. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, and there's many more stories I could tell you, but um, I, I know our time is limited. And um, so it was really trying to get to the finish line, staying positive, leading a team, um, making a film that is a deeply human story centered on specific characters, but set in this, in this very harsh reality. Um, it was pretty overwhelming. I'd say it was, it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. The fact that you've completed it and it's now available for people to watch is amazing. And do you think the choice of choosing to film in uh, Palestine, along with all of the challenges that took place, do you think that will have a broader impact on the audience as a whole? Oh, I think I, de I definitely think so. First of all, I've just got loads of like stories anyway to tell, which is which is helpful in in the sense of like people are always intrigued, like how did you manage this, um, from a sort of marketing point of view, if you like. Um, but the film itself, it's um, it, you can breathe in the film when you when you watch the film, the topography, for example. Um, we've got these beautiful wide shots where you see the landscapes, the beautiful and the ugly. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, you. you you had incredible performances from Palestinians. Um, yes, they could have been brought outside, some of them, not all of them, um, but you also have that sort of impact and love of all the people who worked on the film that really permeates in the film mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's not just a job for everybody who worked on this film, it's, it's their life. And, and, and you feel that, you feel that in the performances, you feel that from the entire project, to be honest. And, and I think audiences have been feeling that in the UAE, for sure. Um, we've had such a incredible reaction. So I, yeah, I do think so. Well, the Palestinian case has been brought to light uh, only recently, of course, you know, or I would say recognized by Western people. So do you think that your movie, and uh, you directed it in a way that I would say is portrayed effectively to the Western society and the Western world? Do you know, it's, I think for me, I've always had my foot in, in, you know, one foot in the West, one foot in the Arab world as a Palestinian. And so I think I just naturally, I follow my creativity and I, I, I'd like to say I have the best of both worlds in many ways. And so that by default, I, I've, I've written and directed a film that 
I'd say kind of almost appeals to me as somebody who is multicultural, but at the same time, yes, I, I am very accustomed to and have grown up on, you know, Western films in many ways. And um, but also just just telling a story that I think is really representative of 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 what, what you know that place on Earth, and and its beauty, and there's there's humor in it, and there's sort of cultural elements in it. Um, there's multicultural characters in it. Again, just because I think that that is, you know, what I've seen and witnessed there. Um, I've met people like Lisa, the the, the British volunteer um, played by Imogen Poots. Um, I've had, you know, I've witnessed so much of what's what's going on in the film. Um, it's inspired by true events. So I, I don't know, but I, I think it does have an appeal that's more broad, but just by default. Yeah. So now it's uh, it's released and it's being shown also in Alistair Cal Avenue and which uh, Cinema Kiel is a you know strong advocate for a Palestinian cause. Um, how does that feel and where can people also watch it? You know. Yeah. So so we had our world premiere at Toronto International Film Festival and we had our MENA premiere in Jeddah in uh, the Red Sea International Film Festival. Um, And well, I'll plug that we took home the Best Actor Award and the Main Jury Award, so that was great. Amazing. Congrats. Um, and then we had a sort of, yeah, the cinema-wide release in the, across the GCC, Saudi Arabia, UAE, um, and Kuwait, February 8th. And you can still see it in, in the UAE uh, across uh, select cinemas, uh, including Cinema Akil, um, Vox, Roxy. Um, And we will be having um, cinema-wide releases in the region further, Lebanon, Jordan, Egypt, that's coming up. We have our UK premiere at Glasgow Film Festival um, in, in early March, I'm super excited about that. Um, and then it'll be going to more and more festivals, including in Norway, Switzerland, um, the States, in the, in, in the States. Um, we'll have a cinema-wide release coming up in Italy, um, and, and hopefully, you know, wider releases everywhere all over the world but it's a process it's a process mm -hmm. and and hopefully eventually on streamers and online and so yeah it's Netflix. It's amazing yeah. so you have made the film and of course it has raised a lot of awareness or i would say sheds light um to the to people who do not know what happens in palestine or mm -hmm. like you know the the palestinian occupation in general right mm -hmm. so um the film is out But do you have any other plans to as well continue telling a story of what's happening in Palestine, mm -hmm. specifically that right now we are at a very, I would say, crucial time. juncture. Exactly. <laughs> I'd say yes. very, very crucial juncture in the discourse on Palestine. Um, you know, uh, so this, I am, I, I'm writing, I'm writing something that has, you know, is related to Palestine, it's related to identity and what one would be willing to risk to pursue one's dreams. Um, I'm also writing something that has absolutely nothing to do with Palestine. Um, but this this film really does arrive at this very crucial juncture in the discourse. And so, like I said, it, it is centered around specific characters. It's a deeply human story, but it does provide, and I'd like to think it does provide, even though that, you know, that, that's not the main thing that I had wanted in terms of as, a, as an artist, as a filmmaker, you know, you set out to take audiences on an emotional journey. And for me, I wanted audiences to really contemplate these characters and their experiences and the decisions and choices they make and this sort of cruel reality in which they're forced to make them. But this was written and shot far beyond, you know, um, the last few months and, mm -hmm. and what's what's you know, the, 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 the cruelty, the massacre that's taking place in Gaza right now. Um, but I'd like to think and I hope it does lend a very important context Um, that is so often missing from the discourse on, on Palestine and what's currently happening. It's set in the West Bank, it was shot in the West Bank, not in Gaza. But this is, this is a, a reality that Palestinians have been suffering for decades. And so I think that this film right now has so much to offer on that, on that front. And it's kind of my, my offering in many ways, my, my solidarity, my active solidarity with, with our brothers and sisters in, in Palestine at the moment. Um, I hope I can keep doing that. But again, it's always where your creativity takes you. It can't be contrived and it, 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 has, to, it has to originate, personally, I believe, from, from the heart. So I am writing something, but it's going to take time. And in the meanwhile, you know, we have the teacher. 
Amazing. Um, you've mentioned there that the, the movie sheds a light on the reality that Palestinians have faced for decades, uh, not related to the crucial juncture we're looking at now. Um, however, uh, we spoke this morning about the UN Security Council vote where 13 out of 15 countries uh, are support ceasefire, two countries say no. So the topic, unfortunately, is divided, divisive. Um, have you faced any backlash on the release of the movie? No, no, I haven't. Um, I think I think right now, actually, the film is being embraced more and more. Um, I won't lie, there was a moment, um, you know, after October 7th, where having worked four years on this film, um, I knew it was a difficult film regardless. Um, I knew that a a big, let's call it percentage of the film industry, film world, would not be interested in this film. Not audiences, I think I think actually vast, vast wide audiences um, are interested in this film prior to October 7th and since October 7th. However, there was a period where I think from a distribution point of view, from an industry point of view, um, there was a nervousness around my film because, you know, you've seen the trailer. Um, there are... some bizarre, I'm not a prophet, I, you know, I, I didn't prophesy anything. Um, this is inspired by true events from many years ago, because sadly, this has been going on for a very long time. It just happens to have arrived and been ready and released just a month before October 7th. Um, so it, 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 there was a sense of, oh, okay, the, the, the film is almost dead at birth, if you get my meaning. Um, but actually as the narrative has shifted and it really has shifted because there's just no no comparison um, with what's happening in Gaza right now I actually think there is an even wider interest and intrigue and audience for this film and I really hope it does reach that that audience because I, I do think that while it is fiction um, it is heavily rooted in truth in reality And it's very important for people to really have that, that context that's often missing. Now that you've done the film, do you feel like you have a sense of responsibility to speak up more on Palestine? And I, think, I, think it was, I think the responsibility actually came when I was on the ground in terms of really wanting to do the injustice justice in the film. Now that the film has been you know, birthed or born and it's there, it's, it's, it's more... a sense of pride and gratefulness. And I'm humbled in some ways as well, as a pride and humbled, but in the sense that I could lend my artistic expression at this moment in time. And I have a, a feature length cinematic film with some beautiful, stunning performances um, about an important subject matter that matters to me personally um, and to so many. At this moment in time, I, I think I feel kind of, um, yeah, I'd say p- proud and grateful that I have something to, to offer. Because right now, so many of us are feeling we're immersed in, in grief. Um, and, and whether you're Palestinian or not Palestinian, what's taking place is, is almost beyond understanding. You, it's so difficult to process. And, and, and centering even how we feel is ridiculous when we think about what, what Palestinians are experiencing on the ground. So to be able to have that gives me a sense of, okay, this is my active engagement. This is something, and, and, and I'm, and yeah, there, there does come some responsibility. I, 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 I agree, yes, by default, I think. Um, but I'm used to that. The present, it was a short film, it was very specific, and I, I carried a, a lot of, I guess, responsibility with that as well, but also pride. That brings us to the end of our interview. Um, thank you so much for your time this morning and thank you for shedding light on the injustice that's going on and that has con- continued to go on for decades in Palestine. We really appreciate your time this morning thank and you. best of luck with the movie. Uh, it is out, as you said, in cinemas across the region. Yes, now select cinemas because it's been out since February 8th, but um, yeah, for another... <laughs> at least nine days. <laughs> let's keep it going and let's get it onto the streaming platforms, which means we'll have access to it consistently. And then I'll come back. Farhan <laughs> <laughs> uh, Blusi, thank you so much for your time this morning. We really appreciate it, guys. That is all we have time for. We're back with you tomorrow morning, same time, same place. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Bye-bye. <laughs>